How the f do I choose a welder? If you're here, then you wanna know what type of welder to buy for the project you're working on. I'll start first by saying we're mainly gonna be talking about automotive in this video, but it can really apply to all different types of projects that you'll be doing with a welder. The very first consideration when buying a welder is the power you have supplied to your work area. If you only have 120 volt outlets or a standard household outlet, you're gonna be limited to less powerful welders. If you have 240 volts, then you usually can run most welders on the market. If you're gonna be doing a ton of welding, we always recommend getting 240 volts installed. This just gives you a bunch more flexibility. Power input directly affects your welding capacity. So if you know you're gonna be welding super thick frame steel all the time, then you should probably look at 240 volts. Our MiG 250 runs off of 240 volts and it can weld up to half inch thick steel. But on the flip side, our MiG 140, which runs off 120 volts, can weld steel up to 3 16 inch thick. If you're only gonna be welding sheet metal on a car or smaller frame rails, then that might be plenty for you. Most of our welders even offer the ability to run off of 120 volt and 240 volt. So if you only have 120 and you think you might upgrade to 240 down the road, then you can pick up one of them. The next thing you should consider is whether or not you wanna run a gas bottle. If you don't mind purchasing a gas bottle, then you have a lot more options. You can make and TIG weld on steel, stainless, and aluminum. If you wanna forego the gas bottle, then you will be limited to flux core welding and stick welding. Flux core welding can be done with most of our MIG welders, meaning you can purchase one of the MIG welders and run with or without gas. Other brands have machines that are only flux core, but you really lack flexibility there. Flux core has a ton of good uses, but if you're doing thin material like you would find on a car, we generally recommend that you use gas. Same goes for stick welding. It's commonly used for heavy machinery, pipeline work, outdoor welding applications, but if you're doing a lot of work on a car, you should probably stay away from stick welding. Now we can talk about what type of welder fits you best. MIG and TIG welding can be used interchangeably when working on a car, meaning you can weld sheet metal, frame rails, suspension components with both MIG and TIG welders. Assuming you have the correct gas and equipment, you can weld steel, stainless, and aluminum on both MIG and TIG. There's no right or wrong answer when it comes to MIG and TIG welding. It really comes down to what better suits you. What you need to consider is what you do after the weld. Is it sheet metal? Then you might want to hammer in dolly after your weld seam to reverse any shrinking. In that case, TIG is a better option because the weld is much softer. However, you also need to remember that people have been MIG welding sheet metal for years. Hobbyists like myself find it easier to pick up a MIG welder and do a couple zaps, pull out a grinder, then be done. If you're repairing a cracked frame, you might not care about the appearance, and MIG welding might be the right answer because you can quickly get it done as opposed to TIG welding, which might take a little more time. The reason it takes a little more time is because TIG welding requires a little more attention when it comes to cleaning the metal before welding. Now you should always clean your metal as much as possible before welding, but MIG welding gives you some breathing room and a little dirt is not the end of the world or your weld bead. But when it comes to TIG welding, a little dirt can really screw up your weld bead and you'll see that error in the results. Now if you're here thinking, wow, sounds like I wanna do a little bit of both. Well, there's an option for that too. There's a ton of different multi-process welders on the market. This just means the machine can do more than one function, like MIG and TIG, TIG and stick, or even all three. One thing to look out for when purchasing a multi-process machine is how much functionality you really want. Many of the multi-process welders on the market will be a MIG welder and have limited TIG function, like a scratch start torch, no foot pedal, so you're welding at a set amperage the entire time, and a simple open or close gas line with one set pressure. Higher quality machines like the Elite ACDC MP200i are a fully loaded MIG, TIG, and stick welder, meaning the TIG function has all the bells and whistles you would find in a dedicated TIG machine. High frequency start, rocker style foot pedal, two separate gas systems, pulse settings, you name it, it has it. I know this was a ton of information, but it pretty much boils down to a couple factors. Power at your shop, what material you're gonna be welding, how thick you wanna weld, and whether or not you wanna run gas. Once you figure that out, you can choose a style of welder, like MIG, TIG, or multi-process, and from there, you can pick a specific machine. At Eastwood, we carry a large variety of machines, everything from 90 amp MIG welders that will flux core weld and MIG weld, all the way up to our MP200i, which is basically like having three machines in one. For more information on these welders, use the link in the description or head over to eastwood.com.